Can the U.S. government be convinced of the benefits of a strategic Bitcoin reserve? The Bitcoin Policy Institute certainly seems to think so. And they just created a 53-page report to prove it. Welcome back, everyone. While everybody in the U.S. is just talking about the election and it's all a bunch of election FUD, I figured we would, you know, maybe change gears, not talk about politics. Not that I ever really talk about politics because I really don't like it, but let's focus on some more positive news, some stuff that doesn't sit there and just cause everybody to re-out. We're going to take a look at this Bitcoin Policy Institute report that was issued on November 4th. So you may remember in July, Cynthia Lummis announced the Bitcoin Act, the first bill in U.S. Congress to propose a strategic Bitcoin reserve. Well, as I just said, on November 4th, the Bitcoin Policy Institute released a 53-page report on the pros of the United States government establishing a strategic Bitcoin reserve. The main benefits of a strategic Bitcoin reserve outlined by the report are economic and monetary stability, geopolitical competition, energy and climate, financial inclusion, and human rights. How plausible is it that the U.S. government begins a strategic Bitcoin reserve? If we take a look at the past, we've got congressmen like Brad Sherman that essentially warned that Bitcoin is a threat to the U.S. dollar. And of course, we've also seen senators like Elizabeth Warren demonize the use of Bitcoin when in fact we see that the largest banks are actually responsible for the majority of moving criminal funds and uh, essentially laundering criminal funds. So these were nonsense points, right? These are clearly nonsense points that are just meant to cause fear. The framing of this report is what is extremely important. And of course, I put a link to this report in the show notes so you guys can go through the full 53 pages if you want. What's very important about this report is the framing. Bitcoin is being framed as a tool to help enhance stability in a country's monetary policy, as well as helping to boost confidence in a local government. Now, whether or not we think that's a good thing is a whole other topic, but I do believe that this is probably one of the better methods of essentially um, introducing Bitcoin. And the key is that the framing is that Bitcoin is actually not a threat to the US dollar. And what might be interesting here is that other countries may want to copy this framing and they, they may see this as something that would benefit them. So does this provide an example for, for other countries to follow? The, the part of it where I have a bit of difficulty is the fact that the U.S. government uh, can seize, essentially can seize Bitcoin from any entity uh, that they determine is doing something malicious. So the other part of the Bitcoin strategic reserve is that the U.S. government doesn't really have to play by the same rules as the rest of us, which again, I understand, you know, it's, it's not about, it's not about fairness. It, it's just about understanding the playing field. Right. And that is the playing field. The playing field is that the government can seize assets. You cannot seize assets. I cannot go and seize people's assets. Okay. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. Um, but I do think that this helps to, um, I do believe that this shifts the conversation about Bitcoin. And I think it shifts it in a positive light where the U.S. government would be enticed to use Bitcoin as a tool rather than fight against it as a weapon being used. I do think this Bitcoin Policy Institute report is a good thing, regardless of how we feel about government and government overreach and government control. Um, I have this I, I have this naive hope um, that over time more and more Bitcoiners enter politics. And as a result, they begin to take these types of recommendations a whole lot more seriously. 
And I think that that's really what the point of this is. Um, I, I don't believe that these reports are necessarily meant to change policy immediately. Um, you got to imagine, right, that the government is like this gigantic ship. Like, think of how long it takes to turn a cruise ship on the water. Well, so imagine the government as a giant ship like this, probably bigger than a cruise ship. Think of how long it takes to turn that thing. Okay, it's these wheels move slowly, but a report like this lays the groundwork. And I know normally I'm a cynic about these things. And I always talk about how this isn't going to work. Um, but what's interesting, again, like I said, the report really focuses on how Bitcoin can help strengthen the country. I appreciate that framing. And I do think that framing is going to do more benefit for us than it is going to cause us a disservice. Uh, but I do believe that um, uh, unless we have more pro uh, more pro Bitcoin politicians, I, I think that to a certain extent the, these reports are going to fall on on deaf ears. So bullishness with a little bit of realism in there, right? We're excited about the report, but we also understand that the motivations of government are to maintain its power, increase its control. And, of course, continue to issue its own currency. So, this Bitcoin Policy Institute report. Yes, I think it's a good thing. Yes, I think it's a step in the right direction. Yes, I think it's being overshadowed by the elections. <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, we don't get to our destination in one swift move. It takes a bunch of much smaller moves. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow.